Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and we've talked a little bit in recent weeks about some of the changes that we might expect with Pokemon Legends Arceus, the big game that's coming out from Game Freak, they say at the beginning of next year. One of the things that we've seen from some admittedly leaks that are not official yet, but did come out with the leaks that did correctly guess and show what Game Freak was going to announce, but also some of the things that they've said, we can garner that there's going to be some major changes to the gameplay aspects of Legends Arceus compared to Pokemon games previously. With that being said, let's discuss it. Now, when we're talking about gameplay for Legends Arceus, we're not necessarily talking about how you're going to go about completing the game. What I want to discuss today is your character. How are they going to move, navigate, and interact with the world around them? Typically in Pokemon games, you have your character, you walk around, or you run, or you're on a bike, or some kind of mount. You have items in your bag, you catch Pokemon, your Pokemon basically do all the quote-unquote interacting with the world itself. But from some leaks and from just natural speculation based on what this game is, I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot more player interaction with the world itself. And the first thing that really shows that is how in one of the trailers, well, in the only trailer, you interact with a wild Pokemon. Now, in the gameplay, we see that the trainer crouches and gets near this Pokemon, does a bit of a shimmy and a, a jump and moves towards him. And then you see an actual what appears to be without an interface, a way for you to navigate and throw Pokeballs on the fly. Now, this trainer is not using a Pokemon to battle the wild Pokemon. It's just the trainer and the Pokemon itself. That opens up a whole host of possibilities for us. And I think the first thing is that we're going to see Pokemon and trainer interaction in a way that we've never seen before. Now, I'm not totally sure if this is going to translate to the Pokemon you catch, Maybe they'll follow you, maybe they'll walk with you, maybe there's going to be some advanced Pokemon camp, Pokemon and me, refresh mechanics in this game, ways to interact with your Pokemon, but I'm talking about wild Pokemon. There were some leaks and there's been some speculation, so if you don't want any spoilers, click off the video now because we're going to be discussing them, but a lot of this is telling us as future players, that Pokemon are going to be able to come after the trainer. They're going to be able to chase off the trainer, injure the trainer, attack the trainer in ways that we've never had in Pokemon games. If you were to take Pokemon and extrapolate it to the real world, wild animals attack people all the time. There's threats when you go out into the wilderness. There's things that you have to prepare for, things that you have to be careful of and mindful with when you're interacting with wildlife. And I think Legends Arceus would give us a way to really maximize that potential in a Pokemon game. Imagine going up towards a wild Pokemon, something strong. Let's say you come across a Floatzel, or let's say you come across a Lucario, if you're on what is the equivalent of Iron Island in Legends Arceus. And let's say that Pokemon goes after you. You're not able to battle this Pokemon. It comes for you, it injures you, it damages you, it forces you to leave the area. Those sort of mechanics, those survival aspect mechanics, are something that we've never seen in a Pokemon game. And I think that in Legends Arceus, we could really see that fleshed out in a way. Now, there's, there's a discussion of how do you balance that with battles. Generally, if you're a trainer going out into the world, you have a team of Pokemon. You might not have a full six. We don't even know if six is going to be the limit in Legends Arceus. But you usually have Pokemon with you that you can call to your aid to fight this Pokemon for you. Well, blacking out is what generally happens in Pokemon games when you lose a battle. You scurry back to the Pokemon Center. You could, in this game, potentially scurry back to town... But what if in Legends Arceus, let's say I had my starter Pokemon, let's say I had an Oshawott with me, or let's, let's up it a little bit, I had Duat. I get into a battle with a wild Pokemon, and this wild Pokemon defeats Duat. Duat is fainted. I don't have any revives or what the, the medicine, the herbs that you might use in ancient times to revive this Pokemon. I'm out in the wilderness with just these wild Pokemon. Imagine if in Legends Arceus, instead of you blacking out, scurrying back to the main village and then healing, you actually have to successfully navigate getting back to this village after that Pokemon has fainted yours. You have to actually take your character and run, avoid these wild Pokemon, and make your way back into civilization. Maybe if you don't make it back, you would black out and you would 
eventually just get brought back through gameplay mechanics. But you had to try. You had to try to make your way back. And if you did make your way back, maybe there was some kind of experience that you could take away from it. Mechanics like that are, I think, how you can strike a balance between keeping the typical Pokemon formula and really expanding this game into a territory that we have never seen a mainline Pokemon game explore before. Giving the player stakes in the environment is something that Breath of the Wild does incredibly well with Link, and it's something that I think Pokemon could take note of and really try to maximize in this title. I think it would be amazing if you had to deal with wild Pokemon as a threat to your physical self, not just to the Pokemon that you have on your team with you. Not only do I think it's going to be important to strike a balance with how the player character interacts with the wild Pokemon of the world, and that would also apply to the fact that we're creating the first Pokedex. There's going to be a video coming out in the future talking about how we could really see an advancement of our understanding of Pokemon geography, Pokemon biology, through the creation of this Pokedex, taking notes about the way Pokemon interact with the world, how they live their lives, how they go about traversing the world itself. All of these things could be amazing features for a game that focuses so much on the Pokedex. But that's for a different video. The other thing that I think I want to discuss is how you actually interact with the world around you. Berries, different items that are going to be helpful for Pokemon, climbing, I think all of this is going to have uh, incredible impact on this game because think about the way we're being presented with this. You have this main village, this main town where civilization exists. We don't know if there's any other civilization out there. We don't know if there's ranches, if there's outposts, if there's smaller towns littered throughout this old Sinnoh region. We don't know if we're the only ones. When you go outward from this town, do you always have to come back to see other people or are there going to be people on the road? Are there going to be people out there roughing it, trying to explore and map this region just as you are? Will that mean that we're getting climbing mechanics? In Breath of the Wild, you had meters that determined how long you could run for, how much you could climb before you'd fall down and lose your energy. Are the players going to be able to climb surfaces to get to new areas? Are they going to need specific items to possibly maneuver different levels of the world? If that is the case, how truly open is this game and how are we going to be keeping track of this open world? One of the things that most open world games have is a minimap. Are we going to be seeing a minimap in Legends Arceus and how will that impact our traversal of the Sinnoh region? We don't know how different the geography of this game is going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see how we're going to map that world out and how mapped out it already is. We don't really know how much development of Sinnoh there has been. We don't know how long people have been here and we don't know where they're specifically coming from. You could surmise that maybe they're coming from the Johto region and the Kanto region because in Pokemon lore, those two regions are connected south of the Sinnoh region. But some of the starters we see could show that they're coming from Alola, could be coming from Unova. It's all kind of up in the air at the moment, and it allows you to really speculate on how the world is going to be traversed and how that impacts the character. Are you going to need to watch for things like stamina for hunger, these things that are typically in more survival adventure open world games, or are you almost going to get a pass on that like in typical Pokemon games? Usually in Pokemon games, you have to worry about your Pokemon's health, their status out in the field, but you never really have to worry about that for yourself. Could we see that change in this game? I think it's something that we could definitely see altered to kind of make this experience new and fresh. The final thing about gameplay and character movement in this game that I wanted to hit on is the use of Pokemon and the use of mounts in general. Now, when I say mounts, I'm talking about everything. We're talking about bicycles in the old Pokemon games. We're talking about the ride features in Generation 7. We're talking about all of that. And I think that it would be a really interesting idea if we ditched the idea of bikes, no, no mechanical things to maneuver your characters around the world necessarily, but I think all of it should be supplied by Pokemon. There's some really cool concept art that I've seen floating around the internet over the last couple years of how humans and Pokemon would interact in old times. Uh, you have larger Pokemon like Tauros and Bufalant hauling wagons, uh, Mudsdale is another example of that. You have certain Pokemon helping with farming, certain Pokemon helping out around the household. 
Um, in the in the Galar region, there is a ton of really good lore in the Pokedex about how Karkol, the middle evolution of Colossal and Roly Coley, was used to heat the homes of people in ancient times, and people still travel with Karkol today for that same purpose. It's one of my favorite bits of information from Generation 8's Pokedex. I think Game Freak expanding on the idea of the role, the bond between people and Pokemon in a day when not many of them, I would assume, had access to a Pokedex is going to be a gameplay function that I think would be really cool. And you could do a ton with it. For example, there could be a feature in this game where as you learn more about some of the Pokemon that inhabit the Sinnoh region, as you collect data on them for your Pokedex, you unlock special uses for those Pokemon. So let's say you're doing research on a Pokemon like Drifblim, for example, or a Pokemon like Staraptor, flying types. As you do research on them, you gain the ability to use them for something like fast travel. Maybe there's an aerial component to the game, who knows? We've seen that in past games that were not open world. The possibilities for this sort of feature, I think, are generally endless. There's so many different use cases of whether it's in the anime or if it's in cutscenes in Pokemon games where we see Pokemon in the world really interacting with it. And I think that's the that's something that Legends Arceus has a chance to expunge on incredibly well. And I think they're going to do it. I think there's a lot of the concept art that I've seen over the years. Just it makes it seem like such an interesting and fascinating piece of Pokemon history. We've seen very ancient Pokemon history, whether it's in Kalos or whether it's been in Galar, where we have wars between different warring groups and Pokemon are part of those wars. We've seen war depicted in ancient Pokemon times in the Lucario and the Mystery of Mew movie, where in that movie, the Pokemon have armor. The Pokemon are fighting this war alongside the human soldiers. So ultimately, there's just a lot we can do with this. With that being said, I want to hear what you guys think. Are there specific gameplay mechanics that you think should be added to Legends Arceus from other games? Or are there new mechanics that you think could really work for a Pokemon game? I would love to hear what you think. Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to follow me on social media as well and talk to me more about these games there, my social links are down in the description of every single video. I'm LinkyYT on everything. So let's get, let's connect, and let's talk more about Legends Arceus. That being said, this video is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed, and I will talk to you all later. Peace out.